Okay, Sheikh, let's start off with the first question today. Mrs. Imran, calling from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, asked a very important question, actually. And it, like uh, we spoke about before, I, I'm sure it requires a whole series of episodes. How to increase one's Iman, Sheikh? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyihi wa mustafa. Praise be to Allah. I praise Him and I seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is His last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Human nature is not always the same. It keeps changing and fluctuating. There is always a state of happiness and another state of sadness there is a state of strength there is a state of weakness and that applies to one's iman as well the belief of the mainstream of this ummah is that iman is a subject of an increase and decrease as well and uh, the scholars also say that what increases iman is a ta'a the acts of obedience and what decreases iman is al ma'siyah فَالْإِمَانُ يَزِيدُ بِالطَّاعَةِ وَيَنْقُصُ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ Any kind, any type of any nature of sins, it leaves a dark spot, a black dot on one's heart. And if one does not rush to ask Allah for forgiveness, to erase it right away, it remains there, it stays there, until another dot would be spotted, until the entire heart would be darkened. In such heart, the Prophet ﷺ said, it will be like a glass which is put upside down. It will neither recognize right from wrong. Only what he thinks is right is right, and what he thinks is not right is not right. Such condition is very uh, uh, terminal. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith said that whenever somebody commits a sin, then Ask Allah the Almighty for forgiveness, this sin will be as it was not done. This black dot will be erased. It will leave the heart white, as whiter even than the milk. So the first advice is, since we're all inclined into committing sins by nature, it's a human nature, then we should always, always rush to ask Allah for forgiveness upon recognizing that we've done something wrong. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was witnessed in one sitting. He said, Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayy al-Qayyum wa atubu alayh. Over a hundred times. And the companions narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ayyuha al-Nas, O people, ask Allah for his forgiveness. Since wallahi, by Allah, I myself ask Allah to forgive me more than a hundred times in one narration, seventy times every day. So, uh, we we'll begin from the bottom. Normally we we'll begin with the acts which we should do. But uh, so that we don't forget this very important, extremely important advice that it's a human nature to commit sins. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So whenever the sins will be erased, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا And follow the evil deed with one which is good, it shall erase it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبِنَ السَّيِّئَةِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَ لِلذَّاكِرِينَ Indeed, the good deeds erase the bad ones. So you have always the urge of erasing the bad deed and the sin by asking for forgiveness, number one. Second, following the bad deed or the sin which you committed with a good deed that increases the balance of your good doings, of your hasanat. As-salah. As-salah is the most important ordainment that Allah the Almighty ordained on us. And its name is taken from the Arabic root word salah which is a connection. The most important thing which will keep your iman high and would further increase it is observing as-salah regularly on time. And this advice now to the men, observing the salah regularly in time in jama'ah in the masjid is the most important tool to keep your, uh, your iman strong and to increase it uh, even further. Uh, among the last words that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-salatu as-salat, as-salatu as-salat, wa ma malakat aymanukum. 
he put too much emphasis on the importance of as-salah. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى مَا يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْخَطَايَ وَيَرْفَعُ بِهِ الدَّرَجَاتِ You're asking about increasing your iman. That begins by erasing sins. Frequently maintaining your record. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Shall I not guide you to something that if you do, it will frequently erase your sins. And your ranks will be even raised. Does the Sahaba answer, Certainly, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Isbaghu al-wudu'i ala al-makarih. Making sure that you perform a proper wudu even during times whenever it is difficult. And I would just right now, inshallah, explain when is it difficult to perform wudu. وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ And frequently going to the masjid, taking footsteps. وَانْتِظَارُ الصَّلَاةِ بَعْدَ الصَّلَاةِ And waiting for the prayer. Once you finish this prayer, you're anxiously waiting for the next prayer. Mm-hmm. If this person have this kind of mentality, then whatever Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ Verily, a salah forbids one from committing fahsha, any illicit act, wal-munkar, any wrongdoing. That will be firm in his heart and mind, or his heart and her mind. As far as إِسْبَاغُ الْوُضُوءِ عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ I once uh, was preparing a lecture. And it was very late, and I decided to go to sleep. Since it was very, very uh, late and I was tired, so I went to sleep without making wudu. And we know that it is a tradition of the Prophet ﷺ to sleep on a state of tahara, wudu. It is not required, it is just recommended. I said, I'm tired tonight, I can't make it. But while I was preparing, I read this hadith. It came in front of my eyes. And I read, إِسْبَاغُ الْوُضُوءِ عَلَى الْمَكَارِهِ This is a difficulty, that I can't do it, I'm tired. Or if extremely cold, I can't do it, because it's cold and the water is cold, there is no heater. But you still perform it properly. This is one of the acts, just make an wudu, it causes your sins to fall apart from you. We'll take this phone call and resume, inshallah, after all. I would like to uh, resume what we started uh, concerning increasing one's iman. Okay, it is that. absolutely true that it would require a whole lot of series mm-hmm. to uh, go through every act which will increase one's iman. So if I have only one minute to address a very important thing, I would definitely recommend and advise to surround yourself with a good company. This is a risk you bought in the middle of this ocean. Surrounding yourself with good people is definitely helpful, especially with people whom you trust. You trust on the basis of religious commitment. These people, if they see you doing anything wrong, they will not hesitate to tell you, this is haram or this is makruh. And whenever they receive an advice from anyone, they would love to share it with you. This is very, very helpful, similar to the incident of Hanzala and Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him, with both of them. When Hanzala complained to Abu Bakr of this problem, uh, feeling that he has a weak iman, so Abu Bakr said, me too, and they went to the Prophet ﷺ, and uh, Nabi ﷺ said, uh, this is a human nature, sometimes the iman is increased, sometimes it is decreased. And he advised them to keep doing the good deeds. Uh, so when you have... A good companion, he will definitely be a great help as a means of reminder, in addition to as a means of praying for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, not to forget, of course, making dua, Rabbana la tuzigh qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. And the most frequently supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh Allah, the one who changes the hearts, according to his will, keep my heart firm on your deen. اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك جزاك الله خير